my assistant. Are you gonna let me? Are you gonna let me? No, you're not here. Fuck you then. Okay, right then. Why is it that whenever something really exciting happens, why I never have my camera with me? The regular a regulator, regulator, regulator and rectifier went on Scarlet the other day, and I had my camera on me, which would have been good because I actually managed to ride her all the way home with the regulator and rectifier off. So uh, we had to take it off in order to get it started and get it back home, and it rode 17.3 miles home just purely with the battery. Which is, I thought was pretty amazing. Um, before we start this video, don't forget hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on your notifications. And if you like it, give it a good thumbs up. First off, we need a few things like a stool, a chair, some tools, the old rectifier, the new rectifier, and of course, paper and pen. And of course, a cup of coffee. So, my first job is we need a naked back end of a bike. And there we go. So, before we get started, what we have to do is take a sip of coffee. Because all this magic shit's hard work. So this is the new one. This is the new regulator, rectifier. In fact, it's very much similar to this one. The only difference being is it's got like cuts at the end. Oh, me, things just fell on the floor. And strange enough, that Code Dare kept saying that this is actually from a Honda Blackbird. There we go. So, the first thing we need to do, I'm going to go through diagnosing a faulty one at a later video. But the first thing we have to do is we have to fit this to the bike. And it's not a case of just fitting it to the bike and that, that's it. Fit it to the bike, job done, over and done with. Unfortunately, <clears throat> there could be other problems. Um, with the bike, which is causing this, the rectifier and regulator to um, stop working. So, if you've got six pairs of hands, this is how you do it. So, screwdriver, not screwdriver, spanner at the back to hold the 10mm because it's a nut and bolt job, not captive, which is really silly. So, make sure we're all lined up nicely and we're level. Uh, so that's the first one. Obviously, don't do it up tight until you're ready to. Here comes number two. And of course, you have to have hands the size of children to do this. There we go. Right, it's in. I'm going to line it up with the original markings so that it's in the right place. Because the last thing I want this to do is touch the bodywork and start melting the bodywork. Because it will get hot. It's designed to get hot. It's designed to absorb energy. So remember, energy cannot be created or stopped. It can only be dissipated. So we have uh, mechanical en energy, which creates electrical energy which then feeds into this and creates heat which then dissipates through the atmosphere and the frame and there's our lovely connecting wires which are going to go down through this little wiring harness here and create a lovely circuit from our alternator to our battery and everything else in between. Now, here's the problem. A uh, alternator creates alternating energy, AC, alternating current rather, as opposed to direct current. And things like your ECU, your battery needs direct current. This is what this does. This, this creates, by rectifying the energy and creates a direct current. So, 
our first step is once we've got this all plugged into here which should just be that one into there one hopes no that's the wrong way around it's that one into there isn't it get it bloody out get it the right way around so that plug into there this plug into here and then hopefully that should be that now if you can see we have two red two green and a black this red here um is positive the green is negative and this black wire is actually a switched wire which means power goes in to switch this thing on otherwise it wouldn't work uh, electrosport do this wonderfully complex flow chart if you've never done this before with like with your regu regulator rectifier if you've if you've had to replace one before um or you've got to replace one and you've never done it before um then i say the, the flow chart is not bad it's great and also if you've ever done one before it's great to use as an aid memoir but <laughs> it's very complicated so what i've actually done is i've basically wrote out my steps to remind me because it's been a long time since i've done this a very long time since i've done this um and as i say it's going to get noisy so i will switch over to a voiceover just so that you can actually hear um what's going on okay so um now our first job also what i've got is if you've i've got a oxford multi uh, oxford optimizer battery charger so basically what i've done i've used the bulldog clips from there to help me out here so i can actually just stick these into here like so and like so because the first thing we have to do uh let's check to make sure that we have got some charge he says moving his handlebars when i've got all this set up lovely he says making a complete mess okay so our first thing lights are off lights are off everything's off hello and welcome to voiceover me who is going to talk to you now about the next process purely because it's too damn noisy now as you can see in the top left hand corner I have my multimeter set up and it's reading about 12.26 volts. This should be reading somewhere in the region of 13.5. If it's any lower than that we have a problem. So we need to then take the revs up to about 5000 revs and monitor the charge and as you can see we still didn't go above 12.26 volts which means that the battery is not being charged significantly. So now we have to check the regulator and rectifier to make sure everything's okay there. So we leave the engine running and we collect, connect the black multimeter lead to the battery positive. We then connect the red multimeter lead to the red positive out wire, output wires on the regulator and rectifier. We then measure the voltage and if it is lower than 0.2 volts then we are happy. And as you can see it's 0.11 so that's quite good. We then connect the black multimeter wire to the green negative output and we put the red multimeter wire to the battery negative. We measure again and if it's less than 0.2 volts we're in a good situation and we can move on. Once we've done those two tests we can then check the signal wire which is the black and white 12 volt switch wire. So we actually connect the black multimeter wire to the 12 volt uh, switch the signal wire the black and white signal wire and we connect the red wire uh, from the multimeter to the battery positive we switch on the lights and if the volts are more than 0.2 volts and as you can see here we're at 0.32 Houston we have a problem and which will require a complete strip down of the motorcycle and it could be anything from the ignition switch to any one of the number of connectors and as you can see as I wiggle the ignition switch the actual value changes so that means we definitely need to have a complete strip down and look at all the components within the system and make sure there's no corrosion on any of the plugs or any damaged wires okay so join me again in the next video where I strip Scarlet down to her as much as bare bones as possible and go through all the wiring connectors from the ignition all the way back through to the regulator and rectifier thank you very much I look forward to seeing you again as always any questions in the comment section below and I will catch you again arrivederci and goodbye for now